Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're taking a look at the Dell G7 laptop I recommended in the community tab in YouTube a few weeks ago. John's Films purchased this laptop in part using money donated by Buy Me A Coffee patrons. Thank you so much. You've enabled this segment and benchmarking of this actual laptop. We're going to get an idea of what this 9750H 6-core 12-thread processor system can do with the 4K OLED panel and the RTX 2080. It rounds off with 16 gigabytes of DDR4-2666 and a 1 terabyte NVMe drive. Let's get to it. The way we're going to measure the laptop is in build quality, the components per price that is in it, and third, the performance of the laptop for video editing specifically. Let's see how it fares. When we get into fit and finish, the first thing that I notice every time I pick this thing up is how beautiful this display is. It's a 4K OLED display which gives it a high level of contrast and it also covers the DCI-P3 color range. That combined builds this beautiful display which is better than the IPS panel that I use for typical editing and grading. In backgrounds like this image, you almost want to reach in and touch the trees in the foreground because they look that crisp, that bright, and the level of range between the tips of the needles and all the way back into the darkness of the trunk of the tree really looks like it's sitting there. It's amazing to see this display. The overall chassis is a metal chassis. It still has quite a bit of flex to it though. If I really look at it, it's got just a little bit of that bend to it. It is sturdy. I'm not worried about it breaking or being a problem. And really with laptops, when you get too much flex, you're going to start to see the components inside start to flex with it. And the challenge is you don't know when you're going to pop one of the solders off of some of the chips or anything else that's inside the laptop or break a connection loose. I don't think this one goes that far and it won't be a problem going forward. It is fingerprint or like finger oil prone. So if you're somebody that that drives crazy, then it's going to drive you crazy. I think most laptops these days will. There is a bump on the back of it. You can see here, there's this raised ridge, and I already have a scratch mark right there because of this raised ridge. I think that was necessary to accommodate the hinge because this uses all the I.O. panel back here, and so this bump allows the hinge to come up and out rather than sit back where it might normally. Speaking of I.O., I'm pretty thrilled this is back here because check this out. What you've got is a mini display port, an HDMI out, a super speed, USB port, full RJ45 port for a gigabit Ethernet, power, and then on this side you get another Type-A port, you get an SD card reader, which for me is fantastic because when I'm traveling, I'm typically traveling with my GH5, and that shoots to SD, and I can use that for both photos and videos and be able to edit them on a fantastic platform while I'm on the go. Over here we get a USB Type-C, and that's a Gen 2 connection. And then here we've got a USB 3.1 Type-A. Finally, a headphone jack for all you Apple lovers out there. And uh, yeah, this thing has all the connectivity I could ask for. If I really need to, I can use that USB-C port over here to get a really fast dock and be able to drive it. I can also drive a monitor off of this thing or charge through this port. So we're looking at a really, really great laptop. How would I change that? Well, from a connectivity option, I would probably put another USB-C on the other side. That would allow me to have two going. I'm thankful I'm right-handed, so any of the connections I can connect on the left side, for instance, if I had a mouse that was wired. That way it doesn't get into my way. Um, I think typically left-handers are going to be using a USB Type-A mouse if they use a wired mouse as well, which is nice because then you'll be able to plug it in on the other side. The keyboard has laptop keyboard. It's nothing special. It's not something that's going to, you're not going to go, wow, the degree of travel is fantastic and the mechanical feel is so realistic. No, you, it's a keyboard. The trackpad is okay. You might say it's average. It does the job. It's responsive. You only misclick every once in a while, if that's a bonus. Um, but it's not a glass trackpad that you might see in the higher end laptops, probably in the Alienware line with Dell and definitely in the Apple MacBooks where that is the best trackpad I've ever used in my life. The cooling is pretty insane and it needs to be, so let's close this up and take a look at that. Here on the side you've got vents running off 
you've got your CPU and your GPU cooling with massive heat sinks that run out to these sides and a huge fan for a laptop, 90 millimeter fans on each side that do all of the cooling. You can almost see those through the, the vent panel here and you need to because there's air intake down here on the bottom and then it blows out the sides here on both sides and in the back. I mean, this thing is serious about cooling. It needs to be, especially with this GPU in here. Now, that said, I haven't had an instance where this has gotten too hot, overheated, caused any problems. It will thermal throttle when necessary, but I really haven't run into that when I'm using AC power. Speaking of those internal components, let's move on to the second category, and that is what's in this laptop. For the price, you're looking at a killer deal. It's an RTX 2080 Max-Q, like I said. You cannot find that in many laptops because not many people want to design the thermal solution to make that work. If I had to pick a weak point for this laptop, it's the 9750H Intel Core i7 processor. It's a six core, 12 thread, ninth generation Intel processor. And it's fine, it's good, it gets the job done, but it's not a shining star of the laptop. That would really be the 2080 or more importantly, the OLED display. The reason that I'm not as incredibly thrilled about it, one, it's one generation old, and that's why the laptop price was so low, but two, the new AMD 4800-4900HHS laptop processors are where it's at. They have more throughput in a multi-core world, which we live in if we're talking about content creation. Be very excited to have a laptop with that in it, with a 2080 Ti, but none exists on the market yet. Nor do they come with the 4K OLED panel. When they do, I anticipate they're going to cost more than $1,569. So, I'm thrilled to have this laptop, and it's one that I'll use for quite some time. The rest of it, I wish it had one more hard drive in it. It, in fact, seemed that it did, and I was excited about that when it shipped. One of the viewers, Philip, thanks for pointing this out, it's not in there. And it is because of a greater battery. We've got a larger battery, which spans the full key wrist rest here. And if you're working in the background back here, the SSD drive would go right here, and it gets serviced right in there. So you would hope that you'd be able to access that and put the SSD in, but when I took the back off to put in the RAM, I found that the battery spans the entire width of it. Not a big deal. I tend to shoot to my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K and then edit it, and so I use the USB-C port over here to plug the drive in and edit directly off that drive. Uh, you really can't beat it. Drive connects it 500 megabits a second and no issues. In the fit and finish category, another thing to discuss is the battery and the power cord. This is a 180 watt power inverter. This thing, it's the real deal. Uh, <laughs> it's heavy, it's big, and it is a consideration when I'm packing for a trip. I'm gonna look at this and say, I don't know, that's pretty sizable. Probably don't take it on an airplane. I probably would still take my Ultrabook plus my iPad. But if I'm gonna be going on a two-week vacation to Colorado, and I'm going to be shooting a lot and editing a lot, by all means, I'll put this in the car and drive it up there. Airplanes, week trips for work, probably not. With that said, let's jump over to the computer and take a look at some of the scores. This First, we'll review the laptop monster here with the 9750H and the 2080 Max-Q. Total score at the 4K Puget Systems benchmark test, 594. Uh, this includes average frame rendering times in the 20s, 30s, all the way up to some in the 40s with the dedicated NVENC encoder that's on the graphics card. We got 40 frames a second using the H.264 footage. Overall, it's usable. It gets the job done, and we'll take a look at exactly what usable means in a minute in Resolve. But first, I want to give you an idea of what this score means compared to some others I've run in the past. Here's an example of a Ryzen 3600 6-core processor, second-generation Ryzen architecture, with a 2070 Super. 636. Then you can see a 963 with a 3950X and that 2070 Super. So that was a big deal going from 6 cores to 16 cores. And then finally, the 3950X with the 2080 Ti at a 1232. Now there's a major difference here. This Mini-Me system was running on 3000 megahertz RAM and this system, the Ryzen Ripper system, was running 3466. So that is part of the difference, but you can see that the 16 cores and 32 threads with the 2080 Ti really made an impact at what is now officially more than double the score of this laptop.
Does that mean the laptop's unusable? Well, no. Let's take a look. To test this, I want to show you some real-world examples. So here is a B-RAW clip, 16-bit, 60 frames a second, Blackmagic RAW, shot at 4K. And this I'm going to drop into our timeline. Timeline set at 30 frames a second. You can see this one is a DJI drone shot, shot at 29.97, an H.265. This is 10-bit color, bit depth 10, through the drop frame. Here's 30 frames a second over the backyard, running clean. No issues here. There I am looking up. Hey, where's that drone? Where's that tree? Don't, don't hit it. As I jump and scrub, woo, working okay. In fact, scrubbing works really well here. Again, this is H.265 10-bit, and it, it's running quite well. Now let's jump over into the B-Raw stuff. You'll notice this is a log profile, and it's just the B-roll session for this video. What do you know? Nothing fantastic. I hear something kicking up in the background. Let's take a look at our task manager now. Sure enough, running around 30% on the CPU, and now it's really starting to kick up. I hear the fans trying to cool down the machine, and these fans do get noisy, um, but they have to. Uh, you're looking at that pretty sizable amount of hardware in it for a laptop. I shot this at 60 frames a second specifically to slow it down in post. So we will slow it down uh, at 60 frame footage. We'll make it 50%. All right, so that'll work well enough. Now that's gonna need some noise reduction, but let's see how it plays back first. 30 frames a second, doing pretty well, no problems. Okay, so let's add noise reduction to a node here. Typically, by the way, you would add noise reduction up front, but we're going to do this the fun way just for fun. We'll try the faster noise reduction. Um, it's not as good, but for temporal, let's see what happens. And we're at 27, 30, ooh, 30, getting 30. See some scan lines there I'll have to clean out. All right, not bad. Now let's try faster. Spatial, this is looking at in a small, well, I've upped it to medium, but this is looking in a threshold around the pixel in question and determining should the pixel be flickering like it is. Let's see what this does. Sure enough, we've brought some pain and we're down in the mid 20s in the playback. Lower 20s. Not bad. Now, if we go to better here and we go to enhanced over here, this is going to create the pain. So here we go. I clicked play and we're at seven frames a second. So I do know how to bring this to its knees. And that's something you're gonna to wanna to use a sizable cache for. So I've upgraded this to 32 gigabytes of RAM and I'll be caching these nodes. In fact, what would normally happen, this would be up front, I would right click, I would go to node cache and I would force this to node cache then my noise reduction part is done up front and I don't have to pay that price again. But let's go check out what happens when we start messing around with that H.265 clip. Now H.265 is notoriously heavy on the CPU. There we go. In this case, however, it should use the NVENC hardware encoder that exists in the GPU here. So video encode and decode, these two bottom boxes here. Let's make sure that those are in effect. I'll just play through it at first and we can see if it's actually doing any work. Decode should be the one running and you'll notice because it's a specialized chip, it's not even working that hard to decode and play this footage back. This is one of the major benefits of Studio. If you're in the free edition, I have a feeling this would not be even close to usable because it would be trying to decode this footage on the six core processor, the CPU only. To color this, I'm just gonna pop a LUT on it. There we go and play it back and you can see Pretty quickly, up to 30 frames a second, no big deal, running very smoothly. And I think we'll see the same thing with the noise reduction. That's when you finally start to create some pain. There are certain blurs which also will do the same thing, not as bad. Um, the noise reduction is really one of the most difficult things you can do to this laptop. And you can see I'm now at 25 frames a second, having added two types of noise reduction. But frankly, still very playable, very usable. I wouldn't be cutting in here anyway, I would be coloring. And so I'm not really that worried about it. I can play the auto caching plan there. 
As a wrap up, thank you so much to those of you who have donated to me through Buy Me A Coffee. It did enable me to purchase this hardware, not only for my use as John's Films LLC, but also for the channel to be able to provide a review of what I think was a fantastic deal. I really appreciate you all watching, and I'm glad that several subscribers have let me know they got in on this deal as well. I feel like it was a great recommendation. Let me know below if you think that this is worth your money, and if you purchased it, what you think of it. I've already seen a few reviews, and several of you are pretty thrilled with the panel, the color space, and the way that this thing works. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.